So, welcome to this week's Bible study. And we have a very special Sunday coming up because we have three different celebrations. Number one, we have Easter 3. So, that which is known as Easter Tide, we're continuing on. Easter Tide, uh, Easter 3, etc. So, uh, during Easter 3, we celebrate the number 2, Good Shepherd Sunday. So, we're going to have a lot of hymns that you recognize. Um, the hymn that we're going to take a look at today, very, very fast, very brief, because we have uh, the third thing to go over. Um, the hymn is... For the hymn of the day is the King of Love, my Shepherd is. Um, you know we can also do seven ten, the Lord's my Shepherd, I'll not want, um, and so forth and so on. Um, Savior like a shepherd, lead us. Of course, we know that shepherd like a she savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need your tender care. We know that, right? I apologize for my voice. The allergies are finally uh, settling in my chest and my throat, so I apologize. Um, hopefully, by this Sunday, it will be a lot better because I want to sing these hymns. I love Good Shepherd Sunday. I love singing the shepherd hymns. Um, and we're going to take a look at that. Number three is the 500th anniversary of Martin Luther um, giving his answer at the Diet of Worms, or in German, Worms. I think that's better because uh, people don't think that Martin Luther was actually eating worms. So the diet, which means a a meeting of worms, worms is a place in Germany. So the meeting, uh, the the ecumenic, excuse me, ecclesiastical meeting uh, in worms, where Luther had to say uh, he either had to recant. Well, really, the only, that was the only choice that they gave him. Recant. And if you don't rec recant, recant means uh, to, uh, to renounce your, uh, your previous writings, beliefs, uh, and, or, and or practices. So, we're going to take a look at, number one, we're going to take a look at the readings <clears throat> Uh, for Good Shepherd Sunday. Only two of them, though. Then we're going to look at the hymn, and then I'm going to read to you um, some of Martin Luther's uh, answer on April the 18th, 1521. So, let us get right into the readings. This is our psalm for this Sunday. Let me know if you know it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Of course, the Lord is my shepherd in Psalm 23 for Good Shepherd Sunday. Now, what we're going to look at uh, as far as the gospel text is John 10, 11 through 16. I, I apologize. I, don't, I did not tell you 
the, the hymn number in case you have a hymn knowing you want to look it up. Uh, the hymn number is uh, 709, the King of Love, my Shepherd is. 709, 709. Okay, <clears throat> gospel text. And you're going to know which, what Sunday it is by the very first sentence. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. The wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me. And I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock and one shepherd. Now, <clears throat> in that text in particular, uh, it, it always brings up something that I read uh, in a uh, in, in a I think it was a, it was a magazine or as a newspaper, and the thing that that caught my attention was that the story was about uh, a shepherd. Um, it was a, he was actually a, a, a goat herd, a one who watches after goats, and it was in the country of Turkey, and so this goat herd. Um, was watching over his goats and he sat down by a tree and, and as he sat down remember that his job what he was hired to do to watch over the goats he sat down at the tree and as he was watching over the goats that he was hired to protect and to watch he fell asleep when he fell asleep, one goat, just one goat, started wandering off. And as that goat wandered off, he wandered off of a cliff. Here's, that's, that's a tragedy in and of itself, particularly if you like goats. However, the big problem is that once that goat left the fold and fell off the cliff, there were many goats behind that goat, following away from the herd and following that goat. And, that, and so each goat, one by one, fell over, uh, fell over the cliff, one by one by one by one by one, until the, all the goats had fallen off off the cliff when the shepherd woke up or excuse me the goat herd woke up he could not find any of the goats anywhere and so he got up from the tree and he was looking frantically everywhere this way and that looking for the goats um, and he couldn't find them and then finally he thought well if they're not here, they have to be somewhere else, so I'll look over this ledge. He looks over the ledge, and he sees 123 dead goats, and it was directly his fault. He was hired to follow, to, to follow the, the goats, watch the goats, uh, be with the goats, ward off any, uh, any animals that would hurt the goats, and said he fell asleep. And that is one of the just one of the points that uh, uh, that uh, Christ brings up in our text. Let me find it one more time. Uh, he who is a hired hand is not a shepherd who does not own the sheep. Remember, the goat herd did not own the sheep. He was watching over the sheep because he was hired to do so. 
who does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them, scatters them. We talked about that as well. Uh, but instead of scattering, they, they followed the, the one goat who was going away. He flees because he is a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. I am the, well, let me, let me stop right there. So we know that, that bad example. Uh, with that bad example of the goat herd, or I guess it's a good example uh, for, from what Christ is saying, Christ is the one who is the good shepherd. So if we, if we take the negative and we compare it with the positive, the, the, um, uh, she the, the shepherd who is hired, who, who flees from the wolf, um, he does not own the sheep. So he doesn't care anything about the sheep. And so instead of risking his life for the sheep, he takes off running. So there we have that, the negative. Well, then, on the, on the opposite side, we have the positive. We have Christ. Christ is not a hireling. Christ is the one who owns the sheep. Christ is not uh, merely the, uh, is not, is not a mere hired helper for the sheep. Christ uh, owns the sheep and by owning the sheep, spends time with his sheep, spends time uh, fleecing the sheep when, when we need it, spends time um, uh, uh, feeding the sheep, spends time Washing the sheep spends time making sure that the sheep graze uh, in in uh, in pastures and making sure that the overall hygiene or their robes, if you will, uh, their 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 uh, their coats are clean and washed in the blood of the lamb. So Christ owns the sheep, as Christ owns the sheep. Uh, as such, when the wolf comes, the shepherd, the good shepherd, lays down his life for the sheep. And that, of course, is the crucifixion. And in the crucifixion, uh, we see that Christ has laid down his life for the sheep, even though the sheep had scattered uh, for fear of the Jews, it says. We looked at that, we saw that last Sunday. And so, uh, seeing that, they had scattered uh, during the crucifixion, their sins were forgiven by that same crucifixion, and by that same crucifixion, uh, it he he was he was died and buried, and in, then in that burial, three days later, he raised from the dead, and as he raised from the dead, the sheep uh, were called back to the shepherd, the good shepherd, Christ Jesus, our Lord, and in that. Uh, we, we find that we know Him because He knows us. We know the resurrected Jesus because the resurrected Jesus first called us. And so we are in green pastures, and even greener pastures will come in heaven. So thanks be to God for that. Now, <clears throat> for our hymn. And has six stanzas. The King of love my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living waters flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. And where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feed us. Do you hear anything that sounds familiar in this hymn? Let me, let me keep reading and see if you can find something that sounds familiar. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. Anything yet? In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me, thy rod and staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. See, I, I, get, I get goosebumps here. Of course, 
This is Psalm 23 put into a hymn. I can't. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to sing these on Sunday. I'm going to repeat these now that you know. It's Psalm 23. The king of I'll do a little, little faster. The king of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living waters flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth. And where the verdant pastures grow with food celestial feedeth. Perverse and foolish oft I strayed. But yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulders gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me. My ro- thy rod and staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. Thy, thou spreadest a table in my sight, Thine unction grace bestoweth. And oh, what transport of delight From thy pure chalice floweth. And so through all the length of days Thy goodness faileth never. Good shepherd, may I sing thy praise Within thy house forever. I cannot wait to sing these hymns and I hope that you will come to church 8.30 or 10.30 or 8.30 and 10.30 whichever uh, so that we can sing these hymns you can hear the gospel proclaimed of Christ crucified and raised from the dead in Easter 3 uh, and also hear about uh, how good our shepherd is who watches over the sheep so I have Hope that you will come this Sunday uh, to hear these wonderful hymns and to participate in these wonderful hymns. Now, uh, we are going to take a look at the diet of of worms. Um, But let me put a little background to it. Luther, Martin Luther, had written uh, once he was able to read the gospel he wrote about uh, faith alone grace alone um, word alone and in those three he saw that you did not need to pay for uh, you did not need to pay for everlasting life as the church was teaching. What the church was teaching, particularly a man by the name of Tetzel, uh, he he was basically a traveling traveling salesman selling uh, indulgences to everlasting life. So, and his famous uh, famous words were, when a coin in the coffer rings, a soul from purgatory springs. So ba- what that means basically is pay up and your loved one can just hop right out of purgatory or you can pay up for yourself and when your time comes for purgatory, you just go whoop, boing, and you're in heaven. So uh, that was obviously a problem for Luther and when Tetzel came to uh, where Luther was and was teaching these things, uh, Luther posted his, uh, posted his 95 Theses, and in this 95 Theses, he actually uh, he actually wrote it in honor of the Pope, um, and so he was rather surprised when uh, this imperial diet came. Uh, although there, there were many things in between, but I'm going to kind of get to. Luther's speech. So, uh, the imperial diet of Worms came and they asked Luther to recant, that is, to renounce the writings that he had written. Um, and Luther asked for one day. 
he said, I, I, I can't just make this answer right now. You've, you've got to give me uh, at least one day. And that one day, uh, I will come back and have my answer for you. Now, here's the, here's, here's the thing. If he says, yes, I recant, he would be restored into the Catholic Church. If he said no, he's dead meat. They were going to, they would kill him. Uh, which we will look at that later on. But I want to get to this letter that Luther, uh, or the speech that Luther gave. Luther's speech at the Imperial Diet of Worms, April 18th, 1521. Most serene emperor, illustrious princes, gracious lords, I this day appear before you in all humi hum humility according to your counsel, and I implore your majesty and your august uh, highness by the mercies of God to listen with favor to the defense of a cause which I am well assured is just and right. I ask pardon if by reason of my ignorance I am waiting in the manners that befit a court, for I have not been brought up in king's palaces, but in the seclusion of a cloister, and I claim no other merit than that of having spoken and written with simplicity of mind which regards nothing but the glory of God and the pure instruction of the people of Christ. Two questions were yesterday put to me by His Imperial Majesty. The first, whether I was the author of the books whose titles were read. The second, whether I wish to revoke or defend the doctrine I have taught. I answered the first directly, and I adhere to that answer, that the books are mine and published by me, except, f except far as they have been altered or, uh, or interpolated by the craft or officiousness of opponents. As to the second question, I am now about to reply to it. I must first entreat your majesty and your highness to deign to consider that I have composed writings on very different subjects. In some I have discussed faith and good works in a spirit at once so pure, clear, and Christian, profitable, and deserve to be per perused by devout persons. The Pope's bull, violent as it was, as it is, acclaims this. What then shall I be doing if I were now to retract these writings? Wretched man, I alone of all men living should be abandoning truths approved by the unanimous voice of friends and enemies and should be opposed, opposing doctrine that the whole world glorifies in confessing. If I were to revoke what I have written on that subject, what should I do but strengthen this tyranny and open a wider door to so many flagrant impieties, bearing down all resistance with fresh fury? We should, we should behold these proud men swell, foam, and rage more than ever. And not merely would the yoke which now weighs down Christians be made more grinding by my retraction. It would thereby become, so to speak, lawful, for by my retraction it would receive confirmation from your most serene majesty and all the states of the empire. Great God, I, I should thus be like an infamous cloak used to hide and cover over every kind of malice and tyranny. In the third and last place, I have written some books against private individuals who had undertaken 
to defend the tyranny of Rome by destroying the faith. I freely confess that I have attacked such person with more violence than was consistent with my profession as an ecclesiastic. I do not think of myself as a saint, but neither can I retract these books, because I, sh I should, by doing so, sanction the impieties of my opponents, and they would thence take, a take occasion to crush God's people with even more cruelty. What I have just said will, I think, clearly show that I have well considered and weighed not only the dangers to which I am exposing myself, but also the parties and dissension excited uh, by the world by means of my doctrine, of which was yesterday so gravely admonished, but far from being dismayed by them, I rejoice exceedingly in the gospel this day. As of old, a cause of disturbance and disagreements, for such is the character and destiny of God's word. I came not to send peace unto the earth, but a sword, said Jesus Christ. For I came to set men at variance against father and daughter and against mother and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law and man's foes shall be those of his own household. I might cite examples uh, drawn from the oracles of God. I, I might speak of pharaohs, of kings of Babylon, or of Israel, who were never more contributing to their own ruin than when, by measures in appearance most prudent, they thought to establish their authority. God removeth the mountain, and they know not. In speaking thus, I do not suppose that such noble princes have need of my poor judgment, but I wish to acquit myself of a duty whose fulfillment my native German has a right to expect from her children. And so, commending myself to your august majesty and your most serene highness, I beseech you in all humility to permit the hatred of my enemies to reign upon me in an indig indig indignation I have not deserved. I have done. Having delivered this speech in German, Luther was asked to repeat it in Latin. Um, after some hesitation, he did so. He, re he repeated his entire speech from German into Latin so that uh, those who had come could understand. Uh, he was, he's then reminded that he should give a simple answer. Uh, just get, yes or no, give us a simple answer. Uh, whether he would re retract recant, rec or recant or not. And so since he was asked, to give uh, a simple answer, he said this. Since your most sirene uh, majesty and your high mightiness requ require of me a simple, clear, and distinct answer, I will give one. And it is this. I cannot submit my faith either to the Pope or to the Council because it is clear as noonday that they have fallen into error and even into glaring inconsistencies with themselves. If then I am not convinced by proof from Holy Scripture or by co uh, cogent reason, uh, if I am not satisfied by the very text I have cited, and if my judgment is not in this way brought into subjection to satisfy by the very text I have cited, and if my judgment is not in this way brought into subjugation to God's word. I neither can nor will retract anything. For if it cannot be either safe nor right for a, conscience to, for a Christian to speak against his conscience, here I stand. I can do no other. So help me God. Amen.
And so there we have a clear uh, distinction of the Christian faith uh, and, of course, over and against the Roman Catholic Church. And to this day, we're still having the same issues. Um, and uh, in, in those issues, we still have purgatory. We still have um, uh, indulgences. We still have... Uh, not in the Lutheran Church, in the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, we have uh, the, they have the Pope as the head uh, of the church. Now, we pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the perils of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, and I look forward to seeing you this Sunday. Amen.